Hey you guys, Johnny Banjo with The Banjo File. Thank you for stopping by. So today we're taking a look at this little guy, the Mulucky or Mulucky, not sure which it is, uh, mini banjo model B803, which I got off of amazon.com. And um, just a little backstory, um, I had long wanted one of those banjo laylies or banjo ukuleles. Um, I thought they were just wicked cute and uh, fun looking. And, um, but I always knew that, you know, they're fundamentally a ukulele. Uh, they're not uh, tuned or played like a banjo. So I never bought one. And I just happened to trip across this little guy and others like it being sold by uh, Mulucky and um, actually some other companies as well on Amazon. And uh, picked this one out. Uh, it looked, I, I liked, I just liked the looks of it and um, uh, thought I'd give it a whirl. And I wanted to uh, take a look at it today and, and do a little review of it. So uh, let's take a close look at it. Um, first off, I want to uh, point out that this guy is in fact modified. I modified it. I changed the tuners on it. So these are not the stock tuners that came with the instrument. Um, the neck is blonde maple with a smooth satin finish. It has uh, 19 nickel frets that are pressed into a rosewood fingerboard with ABS plastic binding, which is a rather nice touch. It has these pretty snowflake inlays on the fretboard, and um, it does have side fret marker dots, which is also a rather nice touch uh, for a uh, small, uh, inexpensive instrument such as this. Um, as you can see, the peg head is in a traditional shape and it has this nice laser burned uh, Mulucky logo on it. Um, it does have behind that truss rod cover, it does indeed have a truss rod, in fact. My most significant complaint about this instrument is with the tuners that it's shipped with. Um, they appeared to be basically garden variety, uh, open worm screw ukulele tuners and they felt kind of junky and I had my misgivings about whether you know ukulele tuners that are intended to be used with nylon strings could actually hold the tension of steel, uh, of steel strings. Um, they seemed to but they felt a bit junky and they had a lot of play in them and uh, which means in other words you had to uh, turn the peg a fair amount before anything would actually happen and um, the strings did go out of tune um, initially quite a lot but to be fair that could just be because the instrument was new um, and was just settling in I'm not sure but I just happened to have a uh, set of quality um, full-size planetary banjo tuners available they were just sitting around in a box um, they came off of another banjo that um, I upgraded its hardware. So I tried putting them on this mini banjo just to see what would happen. Um, I did have to drill the holes in the peg head about an eighth of an inch uh, wider or so. Um, so there was no going back on this little experiment once I took a drill to the banjo. Um, but the rest of the installation was pretty uneventful. The planetaries do, in fact, work better than the, than the stock ukulele tuners. But that said, this is truly an absurd upgrade, if only because these tuners 
uh, are themselves worth more than the entire <laughs> mini banjo cost. Um, I only did this because I happen to already have them available and had no particular use for them. For as much as I intend to play this instrument, which frankly isn't that much, um, I'm sure the original ukulele tuners would have worked out just fine, um, even if they were a bit annoying to uh, use and maybe had to be retuned with some frequency. The pot features a Remo 8-inch glossy black Mylar head. Um, it is tensioned by 12 brackets. Uh, these are flat style J-hook uh, brackets that are flat along much of their entire length actually. Um, and they look similar to uh, the kinds of J-hooks that you'll find on cheaply made banjos. The hooks, the tension hoop, and the shoes are all chrome plated. Um, and so is the armrest and the tailpiece. The tailpiece looks to be an ordinary stock no-knot banjo tailpiece, full size. The bridge is likewise a full size garden variety, ebony on maple, three-footed um, banjo bridge, 5 8 inch height. The rim and resonator are both glossy black plastic. At least one reviewer complained about this, about the rim being made out of plastic, but you know, frankly, I don't see that as being such a big deal. Cheap banjos often use alternative materials for the rim, such as cast aluminum, and even certain makers of quality banjos have used uh, drum shells. Um, so I don't see that as being necessarily a big deal. Um, the glossy black plastic fits the overall aesthetic of this banjo pretty nicely. And, and, and honestly, frankly, what do you want? What do you expect for a $150 instrument? At least that's what I paid for this when I bought it. And the price has come down a little since. I notice it fluctuates quite a bit on Amazon. The resonator is attached by four really tiny screws, which is one minor fault with this instrument. Not only do they require a precision screwdriver to remove, but also their placement close to the rim necessitates coming at them from an angle, which uh, makes it pretty easy to uh, strip them. So with the resonator removed, you could see that the pot uses a hybrid open back resonator design with shoes and screws for the brackets and a resonator flange that's trapped between the shoes and the nuts. So you can easily remove the resonator and the flange and you're left with a traditional design open back banjo. So that's cool, but then again, that said, it's probably not gonna make much of a difference on this very small instrument with a plastic pot, um, sound-wise, whether you have a resonator or not. And it would compromise the general aesthetic that you paid extra money for, because if, you, if what you want is an open back banjo, then Mulucky, as well as other makers, do sell, um, open back type models, and they cost significantly less. So I don't know why you would pay a premium for this uh, resonator model, only to have to remove the resonator. Uh, you're basically removing the thing that you paid for. Um, I chose it because I just really liked the overall look of it, frankly, and, and I'm just gonna leave the resonator on. Like I said, it doesn't seem to make much of a difference in terms of the tone um, or the volume of this instrument. I did feel a need to stuff a rag inside the pot um, when I put the resonator back on um, to muffle some of the toy-like echoey reverberation within the pot, which is um, probably exacerbated by the fact that it is all made of plastic. The neck appears to be joined to the rim with one lag bolt and one coordinator rod. Um, two coordinator rods would have been better, but this is a pretty common construction, especially on cheaper banjos. And uh, bear in mind that this instrument is much, much lighter than a full-scale banjo is. And, and indeed, the maple neck actually weighs a good bit more than the pot, uh, with it, the pot's plastic construction and minimal metal hardware, making this, this instrument actually weirdly top-heavy. Um, it came pre-strung with a spare set of strings, but the intended tuning uh, was uh, CGE... G, uh, which would be the standard banjo tuning capoed up to the fifth fret. And I tried that, 
and it sounded uh, kind of comically high to my ear, adding to the slightly toy-like sound. To simulate the sound of it, it sounded like this. That's how it sounded open. So my solution was to swap out the strings for these Deering Julia Bell strings for their extra heavy gauges so that I could tune down the banjo to standard G tuning without the strings sounding like slack rubber bands. Comparing these uh, two tunings, I prefer the standard banjo tuning using these heavier strings. The action feels quite low to me actually, um, actually a little lower than I would prefer. Um, and, but I don't want to make any adjustments that could raise it because I'm not even sure that they would work on an instrument such as this. Um, and I, I, I'm, I'm loath to try it. Uh, it didn't pose any problems with string buzz anywhere on the neck, so I just basically learned to live with it. Of course, a small scale instrument such as this also requires some getting used to the narrower string spacing. It's slightly narrower at the neck, even though it's a uh, standard width, uh, standard spacing uh, at the bridge. And it also requires getting used to the much closer frets. The sound is a bit muddy. You're not exactly gonna have them swooning in the aisles at your next concert with this little guy. But then again, uh, what do you want for a cheap uh, novelty instrument? The intonation is okay, it's not great, especially as you go up the neck, but it's, it's acceptable, again, for this kind of instrument. And, and it is a lot of fun to play. Um, I actually find myself grabbing it uh, surprisingly often, more often than I expected, just because it is so small and light and convenient. Uh, for example, when I'm sitting at my computer just tabbing out a banjo uh, arrangement, um, I find it easier to just grab this little guy and to noodle around on it because it's just, again, so much easier to hold when I'm sitting at a computer desk than a full-size banjo would be. It would also be great for travel uh, because of its uh, size and weight, but also because of its low cost relative to even an entry-level full-size banjo. Um, and that means it's just not a big deal if it were to get uh, uh, lost or damaged in transit. Here's the complement of accessories it came with, some of them more useful than others. I had to laugh at the pickup. I have no idea how well that works. I'm never gonna try it. Uh, there are several plastic plectrums. I don't know why those would be included. Um, there is a set of cheap plastic finger picks that are close to useless. Not sure what you're supposed to clean with this very small cleaning cloth. The strings maybe, or the chrome plating, not sure. But it's a nice touch that they branded it with their logo. This included electronic tuna is perfectly decent and functional. The spare set of strings is thoughtful. The included ordinary ukulele strap is perfectly serviceable and appropriate for this instrument. And they did install a button for fastening it on the underside of the neck where it joins the pot. At least one reviewer complained that this seemed to be an odd location. And it is if you're gonna fasten the strap like you would a ukulele or a guitar where the other end would be tied around the peg head. In which case the button should be near the tailpiece. But this is a banjo, not a ukulele, and straps aren't fastened to banjos that way. Banjos typically have most of their weight in the pot, and the strap is generally attached right around where they put the button on one side and uh, at the tailpiece on the other. And that's exactly what I've done here, and it works fine, even though this particular instrument, ironically, does have an atypical weight distribution where the neck is actually heavier than the pot. I imagine they just found it easier to attach the button to the wood neck rather than to the plastic pot, and it is consistent with how banjos are strapped. The custom gig bag is very cute and much appreciated, otherwise it might be hard to find a good travel or storage solution for this instrument. And again, it's a nice touch that they branded it with their logo. It did come with wrenches for the bracket nuts and for the truss rod tucked helpfully inside of its pocket. So overall, I do think this Mulucky Mini Banjo model B803 is, is uh, pretty cute, uh, pretty fun to play, um, not bad for the money. 
To be clear, this is not a paid endorsement. I have no attachment to this company. I was not asked to review it. I was not provided with the instrument. I purchased it with my own money. Feel free to let us know in the comments what you think of this Milwaukee Mini Banjo or if you have any questions about it. Thank you for joining me for this review. Feel free to check out my other videos where I just share my enthusiasm for five string banjo and claw hammer banjo playing. Toodles!